You are listening to Open Democracy. Welcome to the Open Democracy Show. Today's article is by Sydney Bauer and is titled Idaho Bill Tries Again to Equate Trans Healthcare with Female Genital Mutilation. Idaho's Republican controlled House of Representatives has passed a bill criminalizing all gender affirming health care for trans minors in the state equating such procedures with female genital mutilation or cutting. The draft bill, HB 71, says medical workers who provide gender-affirming health care, including puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and surgery to anyone under the age of 18, can be prosecuted. If convicted, they could be imprisoned for up to 10 years. Authorizing this care is also considered a felony under the bill, so parents could be prosecuted too. Campaigners have warned the bill will both deprive trans minors of essential health care and put girls at increased risk of FGM or FGC. The bill was rushed through the lower chamber of the state legislature in just two weeks and passed by a majority of 58 to 12 on February 15th. It now goes to the state Senate and, if approved there, to the desk of the Republican governor, Brad Little, for signature. FGM or FGC is a ritual passage in some cultures, and it's considered child abuse and gender-based violence against women and girls. The World Health Organization defines it as the partial or total removal of external female genitalia or other injury to female genital organs for non-medical reasons. It has no health benefits and can lead to a range of serious, negative physical and mental health outcomes. Idaho's draft law is similar to a Texas bill, which is yet to be voted on, that equates gender-affirming health care with genital mutilation. Both amend existing state legislation that bans FGM slash C by removing the word female from the phrase female genital mutilation, as well as the specific language that defines this harmful practice. Changing the language changes the law from focusing on FGM slash C to instead focusing on gender-affirming health care, and these two issues are not the same said Caitlin LeMay, the chair of the U.S. End FGM slash C network, a platform of survivors, civil society groups, activists, policymakers, and healthcare providers. They are essentially scrubbing FGM slash C from the bill completely, which is incredibly concerning, LeMay told Open Democracy. If HB 71 is passed, there will no longer be a bill that prohibits FGM slash C specifically thus putting girls in Idaho at risk and left without any state protections. The Idaho bill bans any medical procedure performed on a child for the purpose of attempting to alter the appearance of or affirm the child's perception of the child's sex if that perception is inconsistent with the child's biological sex. But, LeMay explained, FGM slash C has nothing to do with the person's gender identity and does not serve to alter or affirm a person's perception of their sex or gender identity. The reasons behind the bill's introduction are clear, believes Meredith McNamara, assistant professor of pediatrics and a specialist in adolescent medicine at the Yale School of Medicine. If you can't pass an outright ban on transgender medical care, you can try to pass something else that can manipulate public opinion and people's perceptions of gender-affirming care, McNamara told Open Democracy. In written testimony criticizing the bill, the U.S. and FGM slash C network said, We firmly believe that these two very important issues should not be linked through legislation that seeks to criminalize gender-affirming care or be associated in any other context. The World Health Organization estimates that more than 200 million women and girls globally have suffered FGM. Cases have been documented in at least 92 countries, including the U.S., according to the U.S. End FGM slash C network. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say that 500,000 girls and women in the U.S. have experienced or are at risk of FGM slash C. There are still 10 U.S. states and the District of Columbia without laws prohibiting this practice. A second attempt. HB 71 was introduced by Republican lawmaker Bruce Skog, It's not the first time he has weaponized FGM slash C in an attempt to ban healthcare for trans children and youth. He sponsored a similar bill last year, which was also passed by Idaho's House of Representatives, but failed in the Senate, when the Republican majority considered it harmful for parental rights. 
The 2022 bill included harsher penalties, up to life imprisonment, and also banned taking a child to another state to get treatments banned in Idaho. Skog refused to answer Open Democracy's questions on HB 71, saying he is not giving any interviews or media responses on this bill until it is well on the way through Senate. Amy Dundon, legislative strategist of the American Civil Liberties Union in Idaho, said one of the reasons they're concerned about HB 71 is because it's criminalizing all forms of gender-affirming care, including pharmacological treatments, standards of care that save kids' lives. The bill is part of a broader effort, Dundon said, to restrict the rights of children to seek the medical care they need and to restrict the rights of parents to protect their own child and advocate for them. They added, One of the reasons we're concerned with HB 71 is not only because of the name and what it's pointing to, but because it's criminalizing all forms of gender-affirming care. Dundon said it is not clear if the bill will pass Idaho's upper chamber, the Senate, because several new senators were elected in 2022, and it's not known how they will vote. But if it does pass, Dundon said the bill is unlikely to survive a legal challenge as it is unconstitutional. They explained that any potential court case would be a lengthy procedure that will inevitably cost the state and taxpayers money. Elsewhere in the U.S. Though Idaho and Texas have had more success than most, their attempts in other states to weaponize FGM-C legislation to criminalize gender-affirming health care for trans youth. In Washington, one of the people testifying at a state Senate hearing last month in support of a bill banning female genital mutilation wanted to include male circumcision and a provision against gender-affirming health care. And a 2020 bill to ban FGM-C in Wyoming originally included a provision that equated sex reassignment surgery with female mutilation, which was ultimately removed. Republican authorities in Texas have repeatedly defined gender-affirming health care as genital mutilation and child abuse, and also tried to take legal action against parents and practitioners who engage in providing such care to trans children. The Texas draft bill is less extreme than Idaho's in that it doesn't ban puberty blockers and hormone therapies, although it does ban taking under-18s to another state for gender-affirming surgical procedures, although these are already extremely rare for minors in the U.S. and are only done after robust review by multiple medical professionals. Both bills, along with other state bills targeting gender-affirming care, include an exemption that allows surgery to be performed on intersex children without their consent. Most concerning to me, aside from the obvious barbarism, was that most FGM statutes include provisions that touch on interstate travel, said Corinne Green, policy and legislative strategist at Equality Federation, which advocates for LGBTIQ equal rights in the U.S. The Texas bill, by virtue of hitching a ride on it, was the first ever trans healthcare ban to go that far. The Idaho bill removed a similar clause, but Green said she's tracked 34 bills this year that have attached interstate travel bans to gender affirming healthcare bans. Debunked statistics Healthcare for trans youth requires gender affirming approaches according to numerous national medical authorities, including the American Psychiatric Association, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. The Idaho bill quotes debunked statistics, pediatric specialists say, further fueling disinformation about trans identities and realities. The bill states that gender dysphoria among children rarely persists into adulthood, claiming that peer-reviewed research says that up to 98% of gender dysphoric boys and 88% of gender dysphoric girls ultimately identify with their biological sex after passing through puberty. That is wrong, says McNamara of the Yale School of Medicine. That statistic has been recycled in other states to create the false narrative that gender dysphoria is somehow unstable or transient. We know that that's not the case. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us on social media. You can find us at open underscore democracy on TikTok and Instagram and at open democracy on Twitter, Facebook and anywhere else. You've been listening to a podcast supported by Open Democracy. If you liked it, please consider making a small donation to help us do more. As a small media organization, Open Democracy relies on the backing of people like you to keep going. 
Go to opendemocracy.net now to support our work. And one more thing, to avoid missing out on future episodes, don't forget to subscribe to this show in your favourite podcast app.